Now, since the first two rays, the first two vanishing points, are at right angles, the observation point must lie on the sphere with diameter xy. That was lemma two. But there are three vanishing points in my drawing. And whenever you think of just two of them at a time, that gives you a sphere to consider. So the observation point not only lies on the sphere diameter xy, but also the sphere diameter xz and the sphere diameter yz. That means you'll end up with three spheres, and the observation point must lie on all three of them. So I must look for the intersection of all three spheres. Here's a model of the three spheres. Concentrate for a moment on the first two. Since your observation point lies on both of them, it must lie on their intersection. Now, what do you know about the intersection of spheres? That's where lemma three comes in. By lemma three, they intersect in a circle. Therefore, I can throw away the first two spheres and just retain the red circle. So all I have to look for is the intersection of this red circle with the third sphere. You can see clearly that the red circle meets the third sphere in exactly two points. Therefore, the intersection of all three spheres is exactly these two points. Well, that looks as if I've got the wrong answer, because I'm trying to prove there's only one point. So let's suppose this is the plane of the drawing, or the blackboard, if you like. So one of these points must be in front of the drawing, while the other one will be its mirror image behind the drawing. But we're only interested in points in front of the drawing, because we want to look at it. Therefore, there is only one observation point, and this is it. We have proved it existed, because the definition of the observation point gave us three spheres, and we have shown that the three spheres intersect in just one point from which you can see the drawing, which is what I wanted to prove. 